So come all you warriors, who live for the fight. Come listen to somebody, someone who might have been here before you, and they have the right. They're dying to tell you the score. The old warriors don't want you to hurt anymore. Soldiers of peace are not fighting a war. No more. No more. No more. No more. No more. When you're at a school as old as GCVI, there's such history here. You can walk through Valor Hall any day of the week and you'll pass plaques with names of the men and women who gave their lives for this country. And the truth is, they're just that when you pass by, their names on a plaque. But if you look into any of the names as you go down the plaque, take for example, Roy Sanfield Miller, right here. He was a student at GCVI, just like you. In fact, we found him in the archives in 1934-35, Form 1B, as a grade 9 student, R. Miller is right here in our history records. He's a student just like you. And the reality is, we don't think of him as we walk through that hall every day. But if we stop and we scratched any of the names, just like Roy Miller, we'd find a very unique story. On February 23rd, 1945, Roy Miller lost his life in World War II. He was loved by many. He had many friends and family who cared for him. He was especially cared for by his favorite niece, Diane Harvey. This is the story of Roy Miller told by Diane Harvey. My name is Diane Harvey, and I'm the niece of Roy Sanfield Miller, who was killed in action in Germany in February 1945. Roy went to uh, GCVI for grade nine, and he, in my mind, did some incredible artwork, and um, a talent I didn't realize until my grandmother gave me the photo, the photo uh, portfolio. I was in school in grade four at the time, and the, um, there was a knock at the classroom door. One of the neighbor girls of my grandmother's was there to take me home to my grandmother's place. When I got there, my, grand, my grandmother and my aunt were crying. No one spoke to me. I, 
I, I, I wandered through the house, and then finally I found the letter on the mantel saying that it was my Uncle Roy that had died. But on my way home from sc the school, to, from Victory School to my grandmother's house, um, there was fear in my heart. It was Uncle Roy who had made the ma most of me when I was little. He was the charmer. He loved, he loved to play tricks on me. He, um, he paid more attention to me, of course, than the other boys did, his brothers. And um, he, he sent me a letter from overseas and I, I guess, had sent him one begging him to come home for Christmas. And he sent back a reply with, he was sorry, but he couldn't, he couldn't come back. And um, <laughs> I never mentioned this before to you or any of the rest of the family, but there is a chance that I'll never come back. But just the same, if I can do my part, to help make the world a safe and decent place for Mother and the rest of you to live in, I won't mind. Casting a golden light, no dress rehearsal. This is our life. And that's where the hornet stung me. And I had a feverish dream with revenge and doubt. Tonight we smoke and Head by century, you are a head by century, you are a head by century. Now, you might be wondering what does somebody like me do, or how do we keep the stories moving forward? When you look at the bottom of this plaque, it says from McRae's poem, to you from failing hands we throw the torch. And there's a group out there called the Torchbearers who take these stories and pass them forward so they don't get lost. I'm going to introduce you to Karen right now. He's going to introduce you to some GCBI students who are doing exactly that, and maybe it's something you want to think about. Here's Karen. Student Torchbearers are storytellers driven by a desire to express their gratitude. Whether it's as a detective like Thomas, putting a face to a name, or as an influencer like Maggie, designing impactful posts that attract followers, or as a creative like Rania, using art to express gratitude. I encourage students to become torchbearers, to develop a year-round attitude of gratitude for our peace and freedom, and to seek ways to pay forward this incredible gift. Roy Sandfield Miller is just one of all of these stories and every one of them is unique and interesting. It gives us something to think about as we move to the last post. I'm going to ask you in a moment to stand for the playing of the last post, followed by two minutes of silence, the playing of the lament, and then the reveille. Please stand.
You know, we're just a few feet from that plaque that we were just talking about, and every day in this hall, you've got a chance to walk around this poppy and show respect for those names on the wall that each one has a unique story, just like you do. And you know, that unique story is really what remembrance is all about.